Good evening guys, I'm out here messing around the garage again, kind of tidying things up and getting everything ready for the car. Uh, I'm actually working on fuel right now. As you can see, I'm working on the fuel, what little bit I have, some of the fittings. It's kind of nice, actually, I look, just look here. There's not much left here. There's not much left anywhere, if you guys can see. There's just not much left laying around anymore. I like the fact how clean it is up here now. Even all my, so I was keeping all the parts stored in here. There's not much left. That harness doesn't even go back in the car. I need to sell that. Uh, if any of my friends, any of you guys out there, if you need a AEM Infinity jumper harness, I have everything here to go to an AEM Infinity to a 2JZ harness. So if anyone needs anything, let me know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not much left in here. What's in the other one? Let's go take a look. I have Subaru calendars because hold my buddy Colt, who I mentioned the other night, his car got featured in the July part of this magazine here. He's that orange Subaru right there, which is pretty badass. Believe it or not, that was actually Plasti Dip. Pretty damn good at what he does too. It looks pretty. It was pretty sick when it was done. So I don't know what he's gonna do this time. I know he really wants a Cobra Terminator this time. Um, so I'm not sure if he's gonna keep the car or not or re-plasti dip it. I'm assuming he's probably gonna keep Plasti Dip off just for the fact that you know if he's gonna sell it, the people are gonna see the actual. Only gonna see the actual paint. So who knows. But if you guys can see, I have my random cleaning supplies down there, which I'll clean this all up. I'm There's another big thing about me. I'm a huge like anal detail freak. Like I have my cars are spotless all the time. I clean them all the time. Clay bar, wash, wax, uh, do three or four stage buff, wet sand, do whatever to get every little detail out. Now this car, my Supra, it has some issues. Okay, it has some issues. Uh, it's got some original paint on it. It's 25 years old with 167,000 miles on it. That's right. That car has 167,000 fucking miles on it. So, yeah, it's not perfect, but I like to keep it as clean as possible. So, that's another thing you guys can know about me. I love the clean cars. I love detailing. If you guys have any detailing recommendations, I'm always open to new ideas. Anything usually makes it easier. As I think detailing is such a long, drawn-out process. I'm always looking for ways to make it faster and easier for myself as I like the detail, but I also, there's steps I like to cut out. Like, I actually don't like the washing part, per se. I actually don't enjoy that and drying off. I hate drying. Absolutely hate drying a car. It's kind of like uh, folding clothes. Washing the clothes isn't so bad, you just throw the shit and it goes. Drying? Drying fucking clothes sucks dick. So yeah, that's just one more thing, guys. I'm not sure if you knew about me or not. But back again, uh, not much in here, just some like random stuff. My Cusco rear strut bar's back here until I put that in when all the fuel system's done. Just some, some of the boxes left there for the fuel pump, some fuel line, some of the line I had for the catch can I'd made, uh, intake air temperature sensor that actually came with my AEM when I bought it used, and this is, I think this, this is a fuel pressure sensor, I think, doesn't even say, but I'm pretty damn sure, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that's a, fuel, a stainless steel fuel pressure sensor, which is kind of funny because I just bought a brand new one, so I guess I'll have extra. You know what, let me get some light. Can't really see much on it. This little guy here, pretty fucking sweet. So I put the belt back on, which I'm probably gonna have to take it back off because duh. See, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about, guys. I fucking rush and I don't even think about it. So this part right here, that's where the fan attaches, but the fan has to go on first. So yeah, I have to take that back off and put the fan on. I think that's where the fan goes. I can't really remember right now. Peak for you guys tonight, it's pretty cool. Uh, my next door neighbor, Dave, is actually, I'm not sure what you call him, professional, or a hobbyist, but I know he's been doing it for many years. He's got, he's painted on how many vehicles and done pinstriping. He does a little bit of everything. I challenged him with doing something cool with my spark plug cover, spark plug cover. So before it was just black and kind of blonde and I mean, it worked and it looked great because I had a whole blacked out engine bay. The problem is I want something to break it up because everything's going to be black now. I mean, that's nice and it looks cool and I, I think I'll like that even, but I want something to break it up in the center. I kind of gave them, I want it to be silver of some sort, but I didn't want it to be a solid color of silver. I want it to be something different and stand out a little bit. So I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. It's pretty badass. He already sent me updated pictures. He should be dropping it off here within the next half hour or so. So I'm excited to get that. Another thing I just thought about while I'm out here, let's play a game of what's in a toolbox. So since I have this big toolbox area, the TV and all this stuff, let me show you what I have in there. I mean, it's nothing special. I'm not, let me go ahead and close this. I'm not the craziest car guy. This stuff was cheap. Um, I shouldn't say that. I am a crazy car guy, but I just can't, I can't, 
Imagine spending tens of thousands of dollars on storage area for a garage. At the end of the day, this is a dirty garage. I don't want to spend a ton of money in here for something that's going to get dirty and grimy. Start up top here. Uh, I have some detailing product, which is some old shit. Uh, it's nothing new, really, and I haven't updated in a little bit. That's some, some of the older stuff. Uh, I've been, I used Chemical Guys for a while. It worked okay. Um, I use a lot of Meguiar stuff. Now that's the old off-the-shelf stuff. A lot of the stuff I like to use now is their professional line for like some of the stuff like here, like their 205, 20, 210, and all that stuff. Um, their professional grade stuff seems to work really well for me. I just got some random assortments: uh, Brad Pen oil, Canon filter cleaner, uh, antifreeze up there. Got a little bit of everything in the top here. Kaizen Motorsports. Got to give a quick shout out. Uh, here's some more detailing product, like Grio's Garage, some more chemical guys, more. So more a little bit of everything. Um, I, I'm not brand loyal when it comes to this stuff, and this is just regular detailing product, nothing for buffing or anything up here. Um, I need to buy all new, pretty much everything. When I moved from, I was living with my parents there for a little bit as I was building this house, I threw a lot of stuff away because it just cracked or went bad, and I, I didn't want to use the product. So I probably threw away three, $400 worth of detailing product, which is kind of hard to bite the bullet, but I had to do it. Random nothing in here. I keep some of my GoPro stuff and a few random things, but almost nothing. I keep a lot of spray paints of different sorts, whether it be for like lacquers, engine paint, all that stuff. And it comes in handy having it all. Um, liquid wrench, that kind of stuff. It, having this little bit, I have a bunch of excess amount of it, but it comes in handy if I'm like, I need to do something quick, spray something before I put it, before I throw it on the car, it's kind of nice to just have it. So I always have a bunch of stuff. It's not always 100% necessary to have, but I just have it. And since I have this first drawer open, this is where I keep all the power tools. Over Christmas here, I decided to get a bunch of Porter Cable stuff, and my lovely wife bought me some also, which that was very nice of her. Some of this Dremel stuff, which I believe in another one, I have some more Dremel stuff. Just random tools. Old Toyota parts. Empty. These things here are amazing. I bought these off eBay a while back and they're AN wrenches and they fit perfectly to each size. So like three, four, six, eight, etc. cetera. Um, these are a very good investment. I'm glad I bought these. I also have an adjustable version too, which I have somewhere around here, but these were a very cool investment I'd made. Here's my Dremel itself, some more random fit fittings and bolts and clamps. Uh, this is actually parts to rebuild my Borg Warner. I had rebuilt the turbo when I had ran a, not enough oil through it and blew and blew out one of the seals, so I had to rebuild the turbo myself. Uh, bore scope, this thing comes in handy. I love that thing. Old drill I don't use, and the OBD2 scanner, which I usually use for friends' cars. Detailing buffing pads and stuff. Um, I have it lent out, my buffer's lent out right now, so I don't have anything special for that. Or just has random stuff in it. Nothing really special up here. Same again, just random pens and pencils, tape, grease. I just keep a bunch of random stuff in the top long drawers. All my sockets, metric up top. I'm very anal about my sockets. I have to have everything lined up, which I'm missing my number eight and it's been driving me crazy. I'm not sure where the hell that's at, but you can get these little guys from Harbor Freight. They're a couple bucks and they are worth it. They're very sturdy and they're very well laid out. Bought a couple sets. These are my English versions. I don't have much of that because I don't really work on American cars for the most part, so I never really use this stuff. And then I just bought an extra set for some of the extra things I have, some star keys, hex, hex heads, etc. Wrenches, adjustable, not sorry, not a, not adjustable, box, box wrenches, ratcheting, flex ratcheting, mini wrenches. These come in handy for tight spots. Uh, this right here, hold on, I wanna show you guys this. It's called a thread checker. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this before, or you've probably seen them at Lowe's, the wall-mounted version of this. But this little guy here I saw on Amazon a while back, and it actually has every metric size from, what's it say here, M3 up to M24 by 3.0. Um, this thing has been a lifesaver at times. If I can't figure out a thread size or I need, to, I don't know what size bolt, one side's a female, one side's a male. And what I like about this versus the uh, one that attaches to the wall is I can take this, say I need to go with and find an M16 by 1.5, I can take this and screw it into a part of the block or somewhere on the engine I couldn't get to or I couldn't remove. This thing comes in handy for stuff like that. It's called Thread Checker. So if you guys wanna take a look at that there. Lee, guys, I think it was like, I want to say it was like $45, but uh, honestly, it is worth every penny and you'll use it way more than you ever think you will. Um, it saved my ass a bunch of times, especially when I have no idea and there's no way to check. I'm not going to run back and forth to Lowe's or take a shot in the dark, try and bolt after bolt where I can just use this and go, yep, I know exactly what it is. 
I don't have to take a guesstimate. This will tell me exactly what thread and pitch it needs to be. It makes your life super easy, guys. Random taps and drills. Look, some old underwear and stuff. I use these as rags, don't judge me. Detailing towels, a bunch of microfibers. Up here, we got more random stuff. A bunch of Toyota parts, brand new in the bag still, because I always buy extra of stuff just in case. Um, turbo feed lines. I bought this wrong feed line. That was like $70 on a drain because I bought the expensive shit. Turbo fittings, fuel hose, random AN fittings. Uh, the Toyo tool. Just random stuff all over the en engine hooks. Uh, that DEI heat wrap I was telling you guys about the other day. Picks. These little guys come in handy for small, to re small areas. Uh, digital calipers. Random stuff for soldering. Anything to do with electrical. Then extra wires down in here. More random wrenches, wrenches and stuff. Typical mess. More random stuff. Empty, except for, fuck, what is that for? Why can't I think of what that's for? My head's like, not a compression test. I forget what it's for, but I can't think of it right now. You put on the inlet of the turbo, puts pressurizes the system to check for any boost leaks. Very neat, I got that offline. Pretty cool, you could build it yourself really cheap from Lowe's or something, but I just bought it as one piece, eh, whatever. And then here's where I keep all my nuts and bolts organized. I have them all laid out this way in case I need extra. Like these are what, all that's left that needs to go back in the car. Uh, any extra, which there's always extra in your build, uh, I keep them just in case I lose something or if there's a specific toy to bolt I need, I keep, I, hung, I hang on to everything just in case. Uh, that's the toolbox setup and um, yeah, nothing special, but it really works for what I have and what I like to do. That's where I need to be at. If I could get this finished, that would make me so happy. I'm not sure if you guys can see here or not. In the ass. If you guys can see there. It is a pain in the ass to get back to that one bolt there on the turbo. I don't know why it's like that, but it just is. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has that issue, but it is a royal pain in the dick to try and get to that, tur that bolt back there. I don't know why they did that. I'm just giving you guys random information right now while I'm walking around the car. Um, I, I think everyone knows I have billet valve covers. What else? Stock coil packs. I've been pretty much told that there's no need to upgrade coil packs unless you're going something stupid. You can always update the igniter and these bad boys can handle whatever. I always find it kind of funny that everyone updates their coil packs. Now I understand it does make it simplified. If you would run, I think they're, they're almost like a marine style coil pack that like Pro EFI and all those guys use. Um, and they're simplified because you don't need the bigger igniter and all this stuff because they're built into them and they do just fine. But technically, you can run the stock coil pack. As long as you have a big enough igniter, like you have an M&W, you're fine. I mean, E-Canoe Racing, who has the fastest 2Js in the world running like 570s, okay, run stock coil packs. Stock coil packs running 570s in the quarter mile. So people saying like, oh, you can't do it, mm, I call horse shit. Now, that being said, what is the drivability like? I don't know. I, I'm a street car, so they could drive totally different because they're, I have no idea. I, I'm, not, I'm not a car guru like those guys are, so they could run like shit for all I know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't see the point in upgrading cool packs for shit like that. Well, another thing people would ask me about, I am running Megan coilovers on the car. Um, Megan coilovers, and these bad boys here are actually what well, looks like I fucked them up when I was installing the, the engine. That looks awesome. Those weren't cheap. That makes me really fucking happy. Whatever. Um, these are from Drift Motion. There's usually just a regular metal top hat here. They just came out with this custom piece that covers everything. I think it just looks a little bit cleaner. Um, it's just black anodized. I actually might have a powder coated black just so it matches better to everything else. It's gonna be gloss black. Um, it's a nice little piece. And then this is anodized blue from Megan. They're not the best cool loaders. They're called Easy Streets. Um, eh, they do the job. They're, I think they're, I think they're like $700 brand new. They're cheap coils, but I've been running them now for like 12,000 miles. Never had a single issue, just never had a problem with them. Hey guys, so I said earlier that I had my spark plug clover out to get painted, so I wanna show you exactly how it turned out. I'm pretty fucking stoked about it. So if you guys can see, it's kinda hard, but it looks just like regular Alpine silver. But if you look at different angles, I'm hoping my GoPro can pick it up here. You can see there's like a ghost camo to it. I have no idea how he did this. But it looks so badass. Actually, let me take it off. Maybe I can get a better angle of it. I'm not sure if you guys can still even see it, but it's like, it's this crazy ghost camo he like put into it. In daylight, it looks insane. Um, 
I'm not sure how the hell he did this, but it looks so badass. Not bad for 20 bucks. My neighbor did this for me, and he also gave me another little gift. It was kind of funny. So, yeah, I thought this was very cool. All right, one last thing, guys, I wanted to mention here. Um, I haven't really talked much on this, but people have asked me, how did you get into YouTube? What got you into YouTube? Um, did never really want to get into this. Never really had any interest. I'm not into, you know, I'm really not into taking video or taking pictures. It's just, I just take pictures on my iPhone and post it to Instagram. Like, that stuff's fun. But, like, actual vid videography and, you know, photography does nothing for me. But I met the guys from their YouTube channel, Gears and Gasoline, when they took a video of my car. I'll post a link below here for you guys. Um, they did a video of my car about a year ago now, um, and they did a fantastic job. But I met the guys from Gears of Gasoline. They did the video of my car, and after they did it, I just kept in contact with them, and then we just became closer and closer and closer, and then I got married. Right after I got married, they said, hey, we've got a wedding gift for you. And I said, great, that's very nice, you guys. I appreciate that. They said, we're gonna drive up to see you. Mind you, these guys live four hours from me, and they said, we're gonna come see you tonight. We wanna give you your gift. They show up with this. They show up with a Nikon D5100 camera and go, I, 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 I don't even know what to say. Like, they show up with this badass camera, comes with the mic, everything, and they're like, glad to see you got married. I can't believe it, guys. This is my wedding gift for me and my wife. It's, it's above and beyond what I expected out of people I've only known for six months. They're like, you want to get into YouTube, do you need the proper equipment? I say this as I'm using my GoPro right now to take this, but this is what 90% of the videos I've taken so far has been used with. I've been using my GoPro so far. Um, they're the ones that helped me get into all this. But the guys from Gears and Gasoline, Ben and Ben, Ben Lynn and Ben Thorne are the ones that got me into all this. Um, I never in my life thought I'd be making YouTube videos, and I'm kind of glad I did now. I like helping people out. I like sharing the videos and showing people how to work on the Supra and how to do stuff in the true days. It helps me learn, guys. Give me recommendations because I'm not perfect at this. I'm not a mechanic. I've probably said that a million times in my videos now. I am not a mechanic, but I'm learning every day and I'm hoping what knowledge I have, I can help someone else learn. So if it wasn't for those two guys, I wouldn't be doing it today and I owe them a lot. Um, I doubt they'll ever even ever see this because they don't watch these videos. I don't, or at least I don't think they do, but from the bottom of my heart, this means the world to me and I'm so glad I got into this now. If they do watch this, Lynn, your Evo Slow and Thorn, the ZX2's transmission is probably going to blow up next week, even if you don't drive it just because it's a piece of junk. Ha! All right, guys, that's it for this week. Um, or I should say for today. I'm probably going to post another video this weekend because I like making this shit. So thank you guys as usual. Please, you know, share this as much as you can. I love getting people's opinions. I love hearing back from as many people as I can. Please share. Please help me out with this channel and I uh, hope I can spread some love and hope help someone else that needs some 2JZ help. So thank you guys and talk to you later. Peace!